So just to remind you guys sort of where we are. So we're focusing on two body systems that both are responsible for sort of regulating how our body works. We've already talked about and finished talking about the nervous system, which takes in information, processes it, makes responses using nerve impulses traveling through our neurons. The other body system that's responsible for sort of coordinating how our body works is the endocrine system. And we started by talking just about in general, the endocrine system is our endocrine glands that produce hormones, small little chemicals that travel through our blood that affect our body in different ways depending on which hormone it is. Um, and so we talked the other day about the pituitary gland. It's in your brain. It produces human growth hormone and other hormones, regulates your body's growth. We talked about the pancreas, which produces the hormone insulin, which regulates your blood sugar. We have a few more glands that we'll talk about today. We'll talk about the hormones they produce and what their purpose is. So the next one is the adrenal gland. And that word adrenal, the prefix ad, okay, means near. And the prefix, re, or the, the root reno, means kidneys. So the name means near kidneys. Because the adrenal glands are like these little beanies on top of the kidney. Okay, up here, this little hat on each kidney, that's the adrenal gland. But is it like adrenaline? Is that part what? It's like adrenaline? Yeah, so good. So the hormone that the adrenal glands release is called adrenaline. So what, what do you know about this hormone adrenaline? What does it do? Okay. Um, when you like get like really um, like worked up and stuff, and you, like if you're playing a sport or something, and it's, it, um, your heart's pumping and stuff, and your adrenaline goes like you get or something. Yeah, it's a hormone, and the effects of adrenaline are basically to excite our body in different ways. So it gets our heart rate going. Okay. It gives us a rush of energy in our body. It makes us sort of very alert. And it's really an emergency stress hormone. If we think about sort of why this hormone would be important to us through evolution, at one point in our distant past, in our ancestry, we had to worry about predators, Okay. Um, and so this hormone, adrenaline, is responsible for what we call the fight or flight response. Now if you're walking, you're taking a, a hike through the woods and a bear jumps out onto the trail, that's going to give you a sudden rush of adrenaline. Your adrenal glands are going to kick in. Your heart's going to start beating very quickly. You're going to be very alert. You're going to have a burst of energy. That adrenaline is preparing you to do what? Right. They either fight or run away. Doesn't matter. It's the same response as you're trying to get out of this dangerous situation somehow. That's what adrenaline is preparing you to escape a dangerous situation. Now, we don't really have to worry about predators eating us and so forth, um, but we still have the same mechanisms for releasing adrenaline. And sometimes people um, can do various activities trying to trick their body into releasing adrenaline. For example, that feeling you get when you go and you ride a roller coaster, okay, or you go bungee jumping or something like that. So those are activities that are really safe for us, but they, are, they seem dangerous to our body. And so when we're going through that, when you're riding a roller coaster and going upside down, your adrenal glands are releasing adrenaline because to your adrenal glands, this is a dangerous situation. And so that what makes you feel that way. Somebody jumps out of the closet and scares you, your brother or sister or something, when you get home, you have no idea, you're really, really scared. Your stomach like, feels weird, your heart starts racing, you just feel very weird. Those are because of the effects of adrenaline. So somebody scaring you like that got your body's um, flight response going, and that's what adrenaline does. What if you're like, on a really scary roller coaster, and then you so I was just saying, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So that gets well, your adrenaline but, going. Well, what's the difference of like being scared 
and then like, wait, is it like the same thing though? It's like almost the scared? same thing. When you get scared, the feeling that you get is partially because your, your adrenal glands release, uh, release adrenaline. Yeah. Is it like the same feeling as if you're like... Excited, yeah. scared, stomach, very similar, yeah. When your stomach drops, what does that mean? That's just something a little bit, that's different because of the motion. It's not really related to that. So we call this, write that down, our fight or flight response. Sure. And so as we talked about with insulin, there's this feedback mechanism where our endocrine glands are monitoring conditions and adjusting these hormones. So when your friend jumps out and scares you, yeah, your adrenal glands kick in, you produce adrenaline. But that doesn't continue because you realize it's just your brother scared you and you sort of calm down. Your adrenal glands realize that fear is gone, that situation is over with, and so they stop producing that adrenaline and the result and the effects sort of wear off. So there's that feedback mechanism. Is that how you get a heart attack? No. Um, so thyroid gland. Another gland in our body is our thyroid gland. It's found, it's so your trachea, your windpipe, um, your thyroid glands in your neck, it's like a bow tie. It's even bow tie shaped, okay? It's around your trachea, right here in your neck. And your thyroid gland releases hormones like thyroxin, which um, helps to regulate your metabolism. Your metabolism is about how your body uses energy regulates how much energy you burn. The thyroid gland needs um, certain mineral. I don't know if you guys learned this in health. Did you learn about a, something that the thyroid gland needs in order to work? So, energy. What, Jake? So, so you need something that we put in salt. So normal salt, um, you can buy either iodized or not iodized salt. So this is iodized salt. And what that means, if you look on the package, and it says underneath, it says this salt supplies iodine, a necessary nutrient. So they put iodine in table salt to be sure that everybody is getting enough. Because if you have a lack of iodine in your diet, your thyroid gland can be affected. It can start to swell up. It forms what's called a goiter, a big swollen um, thyroid gland in your neck. And so because we, most people use iodized salt, we don't really have to worry about that. Um, some people have thyroid um, problems with their thyroid gland. Some people have what's called hypothyroidism. It means a sort of underactive thyroid gland. And a person with hypothyroidism, their um, thyroid gland is sort of, um, as it controls their metabolism, their metabolism is much slower. And so they don't, uh, for example, burn as many calories. They may have um, a difficult time maintaining a normal weight and tend to be overweight because their body's normal metabolism isn't burning as many calories. The opposite condition is also affects people, hyperthyroidism. This is when the thyroid gland is sort of overactive and the metabolism is sped up very quickly. And a person with hyperthyroidism may have trouble keeping a normal body weight and tend to be underweight because their metabolism is um, much greater than it normally would be. And there's medications that you can take for either condition to help regulate and make sure that your thyroid gland is, is regulating your metabolism at the right level. Um, then our last two endocrine organs both sort of have multiple functions. So we're going to talk about the reproductive system is one of our body systems towards the end of our unit. So, but these organs also have endocrine functions as well. So we call them in general gonads, is like a general term. And it includes both testes and ovaries. So in males, the gonads, which produce sex cells, are called testes. Yep. And in females, females have gonads, but they're called ovaries in females. And so these organs, obviously, the testes in males produce sperm cells, reproductive cells. In females, the ovaries produce a sex cell, but it's called an egg cell. But these, these organs also produce hormones as well. What's the name of the male sex hormone? Testosterone. 
testosterone. And it comes from it comes from the word testes. So the, the hormone is testosterone. But the testes also make sperm cells, but that's we're not really gonna talk about that Yay. here. We'll talk about it once we get to um, the reproductive system. But testosterone is what we call the male sex hormone. It controls the development of what we call secondary male sex characteristics. So obviously um, there's different anatomy between males and females, but then there are these things that we call secondary sex characteristics things that we associate with males and females. For example, in males, secondary sex characteristics are things like facial hair, okay, more body hair, an increased muscle mass, um, more aggressive behavior is associated with testosterone. Hold on, what's that? And some people, so throughout a person's life, the level of testosterone that their testes produce, it varies, goes up and down, okay? Um, during adolescence, it, it goes up, during puberty, as men get older and become elderly, it drops down. And so, it's responsible for producing those secondary sex characteristics. A deeper voice, increased muscle mass, mm. more body hair. And so some people illegally use Testosterone for what purpose? Um, to Raise your hand, please. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, testosterone is when people say that they're, if somebody's taking steroids, it's generally testosterone or some compound that is similar to testosterone because it does encourage muscle mass to increase. But it also has a whole series of other effects on various body systems that are negative, okay? Interferes with um, reproductive system um, and all sorts of negative effects that I'm sure you learned about in health class. Okay, Mr. Ar no, not Mr. Ar um, Mr. Lalonde, who was that if a girl takes, um, like, whatever? Testosterone. Yeah, testosterone. <laughs> then, um, like, she'll, like, grow a beard or she'll lose her hair. Yeah, so or, yeah. that goes wrong. So what I was saying is that testosterone, <laughs> Testosterone affects many different parts of the body. And yeah, so if you ever watch sometimes on like yes, here's when they have like the female bodybuilders, like the super. Um, and if you watch that, you might say, well, they kind of look manly. And that's true because oftentimes many of them have taken testosterone to develop muscles that are that big. And so that leads to changes in other things besides just muscle. People that are taking steroids often um, may become angry much easier, okay, and things like that, because testosterone affects mood as well as all these other things. Based on the color of your hair, is that basically, it's like the color of your hair, is that the color of your hair all over your body? Yeah, I mean, it produces a certain amount of melanin in your hair. Like if you have red hair, you hair all over? Um, so ovaries. Oh ovaries are, the equivalent. So males have testes for producing testosterone and sperm. And um, females have ovaries. Ovaries produce female sex hormone, which is um, estrogen. estrogen. They also release egg cells. And estrogen is responsible for what we call secondary female sex characteristics. Things like regulation of the menstrual cycle, um, breast development, changes in the pelvis as um, girls develop. All these sorts of changes um, are controlled by estrogen. So it's responsible for secondary female sex characteristics. The thing has a voice It's just showing, it's showing both testes and ovaries in one group. Why? Just so that you can see where they're located without having two separate. But why is it like on the stomach? It's not. That's where, in a female, that's where the ovaries are. So males have testes outside of the body in the scrotum, 
females have ovaries inside of the abdomen. Oh, okay. Why don't girls have So these are endocrine organs. Like I said, we'll talk more about them as we get to the reproductive section. Um, but they are endocrine glands because they produce hormones and they affect the body like other endocrine glands. So your quiz tomorrow will include these things we talked about today. Testes, ovaries, I mean, for Friday, adrenal glands, and thyroid glands as well. But you have to know what they are. Yeah, you have to know. Well, I'll tell you in a minute. You'll have to know what they are. You'll have to know the hormones that they produce. And you'll have to know um, what effects they have on the body. Are we done with our notes? Yeah, we're done with notes for today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know how girls have...